Hello and welcome back to the very first episode of... What day is it? No, seriously, for the lack of a better name, welcome to the very first episode of making YouTube videos. Um, also known as, I don't know what to do with all these images that I've been making, so why not make a few YouTube videos about it? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sam, uh, I'm from Portugal and I'm currently living in the sunny Algarve. I'm a digital product designer, but photography has been a big part of my life for quite a while now. I've always found in photography a great way to express myself and to document my travels and just life in general. For the most part, I've been photographing on my phone really casually, but started getting more serious about it, I'd say two years ago when I first bought my mirrorless camera. And from there, my love for photography kept growing. Always wanting to learn about new techniques, new cameras, new equipment, and just about the art of photography from other photographers. So recently, I got my first real film camera, a Minolta X700 with a 50mm lens. Side note, I have shot film before. I own a couple of Lomography film cameras, a fisheye and an action sampler with four lenses that I've experimented with. I'll throw some of the images now on the screen. So yeah, you could say that I was shooting film before it was cool. But this Minolta SLR is what I consider to be my first real film camera. And because it was my first film camera, it did require quite a lot of research. I didn't quite know where to start. One thing I knew going in was that I didn't want anything too expensive. Because deep down inside, I knew most of the shots were going to look like cat poop anyway. So I didn't want to overcommit and overcomplicate. So after some proper research, which mostly consisted about a quick Google search. Uh, to be fair, I went down to two pages. So. I nailed it down to two cameras, either the Minolta X700 or the infamous Canon AE1. I thought I would look cooler with a Minolta camera around my neck on the streets, so I went with that. Something I learned while I was researching was that the film community is a very welcoming one, with tons of information about pretty much any camera you can think of. It blows my mind the amount of information available out there if you're trying to operate a camera from the 60s or the 70s and have access to all of that, especially here on YouTube. From legends of photography such as Negative Feedback, Willem Verbeek, Jason from Grainy Days, Matt Day, Joe Greer, and so many others, which work I've been following for quite a while now, and frankly, the ones that inspired me to make this video. For someone like me, who's just getting started with film photography, 35mm film seemed like the obvious choice for me. I thought, if I suck and all the shots don't turn out, at least it would be a cheaper f up if it was all 120 medium format film. Like that time, I was really committed to playing the guitar, but quit two hours later with my fingertips falling off. So you might be asking, if you have digital cameras, why would you shoot film? And the answer is simple, it's that cool. Also, we were planning a special trip, road tripping from the north of Portugal, in Porto, all the way down to the Algarve in the south coast. And it was something that Maurice and I wanted to do for a long time. This was also a trip that we did right after we returned back to Portugal. As previously, we lived in London for six long years. The plan was to move to the Algarve, so we thought, what better way to do so than to pack everything in the car, convince a few friends to tag along and show them our beautiful country. Also, I thought shooting some film would be great for a road trip with friends such as this one and a great opportunity to learn something new. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my favorite images from the four rolls of film that I've shot, two Kodak Ultramax, one Ilford HP5 and a roll of Portra 400. My thoughts on the images and the film itself and of course, some behind the scenes. Our first stop of the road trip was Sintra in the center of Portugal and on the first morning we visited this gorgeous palace located in the Sintra National Park. Well, I say gorgeous, that is, if you can see it. Normally it looks sunny like this, but when we got there that morning it looked like this, foggy AF. I was not even mad for two reasons. One, I've already seen the palace and its breathtaking views quite a few times in past visits. Sorry, Nikki and David. But mainly because I knew it would be the perfect time to bring out the Ilford HB5, to bring all the moody vibes to the scene and to take advantage of the film's subdued shadows. First roll of film. somewhere. Thank you. 
as you probably noticed on some of these shots, okay, most of the shots, I was having trouble nailing the focus on the camera, mainly because I was still trying to become best friends with the Minolta focus ring and it was taking a while. Like that one time when I was a kid, I was trying to befriend the neighbor's dog and that little sh ended up biting me on the thigh. Yeah, that happened. I'm glad that when I bought the camera, it just came with a 50mm lens. Normally, I'm more of a wider lens kind of guy. I normally shoot on a 24 or 35mm lens. But I have to say, I really enjoy this tighter focal lens of this lens, in which the aperture goes down to 1.7. It allowed for some great portraits with that shallow depth of field that every photographer drools over. We spent the entire morning checking out the palace and its dreamy gardens. It was beautiful and, dare I say, very romantic. Everyone was wondering why there was a guy walking around with a clunky old camera. Nikki and Marisa were having a blast Instagram storing the whole thing. And David, he was mostly on his phone checking in on boxing match updates. Like I said, very romantic. After a couple of hours of strolling around, the fog started to lift a little, but by that time, we got to the other end of the park, so we just got an Uber back home, just in time for lunch. That was our first day of the road trip, pretty much, uh, at least the parts that I've documented and photographed. That night, we opened up a bottle of wine, had an improvised dinner at our Airbnb, and went to bed early as we needed to hit the road early the next morning. The next morning, we continued to drive south to Alentejo with the goal of checking into this really nice hotel that we booked for one night just to chill and relax for a couple of days. After a day of spa treatments, a lot of swimming, human jenga in the pool, and the heated sauna sessions, I still had some black and white frames from the previous roll, so I finished that. The next day, before we checked out, we went for a relaxing horse ride through the hotel property. Relaxing, that is, if one, you know how to ride a horse, and two, if horses don't completely freak you out. I mean, really, have you stood by a horse before? Have you seen the size of those legs? A horse kick can seriously kill you, or worse. I mean, I guess nothing is worse than getting killed, but you get the idea. Anyways, I digress. After the horse ride, we got back on the road and continued to drive south.
Later that day, my friend was driving behind me, we were driving separate cars, and he flashed these lights, signaling we should stop and take a break. This was around sunset time, so we pulled up to this beach, known for its surfing and beachside camping spots. I have to say, I'm very glad we stopped in. The light was incredible. Everything had these purple sunset tones to it. It seriously looked like we were inside one of those insta-popular, influencer-friendly London coffee shops. You know, the ones I'm talking about. But honestly, I wish I had other film in my camera at that time, other than Kodak Ultra Max 400, which renders the scene a bit more towards the colder tones and the blues very saturated, something that I'm not personally very fan of. I think having a warmer film stock, such as Kodak Gold or Portrait, would have been more appropriate since it renders the scene a bit warmer. I got some of my favorite shots at that spot and mainly loved that moment because it was not planned and very spontaneous moments, which is what a road trip is supposed to be about. continue to drive, you guessed it, we continued to drive south towards Porto Covo, a village not too far from there and where we booked a place to stay the day before. The next morning it was a warm and sunny day, so after a delicious breakfast we decided to head out. We put on our tightest swim shorts. I loaded up my second roll of Kodak Ultramax and we headed out for a stroll by the rocky beaches near the village. At this point, I was feeling more and more used to the camera, you know, just by handling it and using it, understanding how to meter the scene using the built-in light meter, but I was mostly taking it easy using the aperture priority mode, or as I like to call it, I have no idea what I'm doing mode. This is where you select the aperture you want, and the camera pretty much does the rest for you. I'd say it worked out mostly great, as not a lot of shots turned out either too overexposed or too underexposed, so I was quite pleased with that. The light started to get pretty harsh at this point. This was around 11am, so I started to look for projected shadows and silhouetted subjects, trying to find interesting compositions that way. The rock formations were pretty sweet. There were a few caves that led to another beach that led to another beach, forming this weird desert beach inception that kept going and going, in which we were pretty much the only ones there, which I thought it was quite cool. We even went for a dip in the sea, in the ocean, in October. How amazing is that?
after a bit more walking in wet swim shorts, which is probably one of the best feelings in the world. We somehow convinced each other we should hike part of this trail called Vicentina Coast Trail, which according to this non-biased Portuguese website is the sixth most beautiful trail in the world. Take that, Yosemite. Being totally honest, I was mostly excited to be putting my first ever roll of Portrait 400 through my camera. So later that evening, I put on my worst hipster shirts and we were off. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Go for it. <laughs> if you didn't get it, that boot was a reference to the very famous port key scene in the Harry Potter movie. One, two, hurry! Three! And no, we didn't put it there. It was already there when we got there, although it didn't seem to be working. It was probably broken or something. This first roll of portrait was my first time experimenting with professional color film and man I was happy with the results. I'm sure I don't have to tell you but portrait handled the colors in a way that it matched perfectly what I had in mind when I was shooting. True light colors more towards the warm tones which I love and it was very forgiving in terms of how it rendered the light particularly in some of the overexposed shots. So yeah I was very pleased with the results. <laughs> Contrary to what most couch people say, you know, that all beaches look the same, I bet this trail will prove them wrong. The more we hiked, the more I wanted to keep going. This was also at the time that the sun was coming down, so the light was amazing. But mostly, and more on a personal level, I was enjoying it because I knew the trip was getting to an end, and the next day we had to head to the airport and say goodbye to our friends. And that f***ing sucked. finally headed to the Algarve, our last stop, but still managed to check out one last small town, Carvoiro, where I've taken a few last odd shots around downtown. So yeah, that was pretty much it for the road trip. I loved every minute of it and I cannot wait to get on the road again and just to be able to go outside and explore new places. You know, when this whole corona thing blows over, of course. So how was my first experience with film? Um, on the editing side, I had to remove a lot of dust spots, but I guess that's film being film. You're gonna get some dust spots on the film for sure. This, of course, depending on which film you're using. The black and white scans that came back from the lab weren't actually black and white. They had this sepia tone to them which I removed in post, that was easy, but I thought that was kind of interesting, not sure why that happened. Some shots required a bit more editing than others. Of course I didn't go too crazy, but I just tried to correct the light in some overexposed shots and on some of the images where the colors were a bit off, but it was me behind the camera, so for that, unfortunately, there's no editing that can fix the problem. 
So all in all, I loved my first experience with film photography. As soon as we got settled in the Algarve, I sent out the film to the lab, which was the same lab that gave me some pointers when I was unsure which camera to buy. Máquinas de outros tempos. It's a Portuguese lab, so I'll leave a link in the description. If you're ever in Portugal and have to get film developed, try them out. I sent the film through the mail and it was probably one of the most stressful situations I've been in. You never know how or if your film is going to reach its destination. Sending your film through the mail is what I imagine it will be like when you send your kid to school on the bus for the first time on his own. You will never see him again. In this trip, I also took with me my Sony camera, which I barely used. I was so into photographing everything on film, and I think because I'm very new to it, it required a bit more attention in exposing the film properly, composing with a fixed 50mm lens and making sure the focus was on point. I was getting into that flow so much that changing to a Sony with a zoom lens was completely breaking that flow. I was having to readjust back and forth between digital and film, so much so that I barely used the Sony camera. And I'm glad I did. Shooting film is a completely different paradigm when shooting and just thinking about photography in general. I also think that just having that 50mm lens, it helped me not get too bogged down in lens choices or technicalities and just focusing on the shooting aspect. So this video was very interesting to make and I'm hoping to do more in the future. This film thing seems to have stuck with me so much so that I bought loads of new film. Of which that sweet sweet and very expensive Cinestill 800T that I'm very excited to try out. So hopefully there will be more videos in the future. So that's it for now. Like this video, it helps me understand that you are interested and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.